Hey everybody, welcome to KM Reviews. I am Nittleman. Today I'm bringing you a spoiler free review for the movie Rogue One A Star Wars Story. Although nobody's ever going to actually call it that, it's going to be called Star Wars Rogue One or just Rogue One. Let's be realistic. Now, one thing I want to start off before I delve into my review is realize a lot of the scenes you see in the trailer to this movie are not in the movie. I'm just so that's not really a spoiler. I'm just letting you know scenes like where she's walking on that platform and the big tie fighter goes and arises up there. That's not in the movie. The scene where she says, "Well, I rebel." That's not in the movie. You know, honestly, I went and rewatched the trailer. There's a lot of scenes that aren't in this movie. Now, does that make this movie deceiving? No, because you still get the right tone to this movie. This movie was amazing. I just wanted to point that out because. I did a review for Collateral Beauty. Click that little eye above and go to that trailer and look at the comment section. People tore me to fucking shit because they said, the trailer was so deceiving, this movie blows, it's nothing like what the trailer said. But at least all the scenes in that trailer were in the movie. People, man, people like to rail on people for that sort of shit. There's never satisfied with trailers. You know, oh, it showed too much. Oh, it didn't show enough. It's like... Ah, enough with the trailer talk. Just judge the movie based on the fucking movie. And that's what I'm doing right here. What is this movie? This is not a sequel to A Force Awakens, which some people may mistake if they're not a hardcore Star Wars fan. It's basically Star Wars 3.5, or maybe more like 3.9, because it basically takes place right before Episode 4. Literally, it leads right into the movie. You could almost make it a, a New Hope Part 1 and Part 2 in a way. Um, basically, if you take the pretext crawl to a new hope, that's what this movie is. It's all about the rebels getting the plans to the Death Star. Now, knowing that, you kind of know where this movie's going. It's not like there's some big twist or anything. It's a pretty straightforward movie. The different kind of twist, I guess you could say, to this movie is the fact that there's not lightsabers and Jedi's rampant all over the place like in the prequels or even in the newer ones. There's not lightsaber battles and stuff. This movie is strictly guys on the ground, boots on the ground. It's a war film set in the Star Wars universe. And that was really interesting. It made it for a really unique Star Wars story. It made it a really cool movie going experience. We get movies like Hacksaw Ridge and all these war movies that are coming out. But this one is a Star Wars version of that. Now, there are no bullets. It's a laser beams and stuff, but they really focus the energy of this movie towards adults. It's not necessarily a kid movie. You don't have Jar Jar being running around. You do have a robot, K2SO, who is kind of the comedic relief in this movie, and he was probably my favorite character in the movie. He was a robot, and it seemed like everything he said was just hilarious. You have Jin Erso, who is the daughter to the man who is basically creating the Death Star beam. He he studies kyber crystals, which is what's in Jedi lightsabers. It's what creates the big beam in the Death Star. And there's this weird dynamic of her, is her dad uh, working for the Empire or was he forced to? Anyways, I could go on and on about the story of this movie. I don't want to give too much away since this is a spoiler free review. Ultimately, though, there's much a bunch of characters that come together in this. One flaw, I would say, is that because it's a one-off, standalone movie, and these characters aren't in any other movies, there's not a whole lot of time to flesh out all these characters. You get Jin Erso, and she's probably the most fleshed out, if not um, Diego Luna's character. He is also kind of fleshed out a little bit. You get to see the kind of dirty side of the rebels in this movie that are not just rebels are good and empire is bad. You kind of see the gray area in there a little bit, and you get to see the feel the real oppression that this empire has when you go into a couple different cities in this movie. You see different levels to the Death Star beam and how it doesn't just blow up planets, it does other things as well. It was just a really interesting movie-going experience. I really loved watching this movie. It's I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. I still like the original trilogy just for nostalgic reasons. I really liked Force Awakens better. Just because I am a fan of lightsabers and the music in that movie and the characters in that movie. But this one is 100% better than the the prequels. This is a real prequel as it actually uh, feels cohesive with the story. And it doesn't feel so separate like the episodes 1, 2, and 3 do. Now, again, the biggest negative I have for this movie is simply that 
I liked the characters that I saw, so I was disappointed that some of them I didn't get to know as much. You can tell there's some backstory with some of them that have kind of these uh, characterisms that mesh together well, or they're friends, but you don't really know their history, and then you don't see a whole lot of them in the movie, so it's kind of like, oh, I want to see more of them, and you know they're not going to make a Rogue One Part 2, because that's what I know A New Hope is, basically, so... It's just kind of disappointing that you don't get to know these characters more. So how is the acting by all these characters? I will say uh, on one viewing, I will be seeing this movie multiple times, but on my first viewing, I found the acting to be well done. There was never any scenes where I was just really like, oh my god, the acting in this movie, they need an Oscar. A lot of it was very f flat stuff. Um, honestly, Forrest Whitaker doing his character, at a certain point his voice was just weird to me. It's like, like I can't do it obviously but it didn't bother me but I just found it kind of it took me out of the movie a little bit because I could tell he was acting that voice I didn't feel like that was his character um also Jin Erso she does have one scene in there where she's watching a hologram I'm not gonna spoil what but her acting did come out there but the rest of the movie she was pretty one note let's be honest a lot of the acting in this movie was one note um now did that bother me that much though? No, because the action in this movie is fucking awesome. The story and the plot line is so great. In the final few minutes of this movie, oh my god, it has to be one of my favorite Star Wars moments in Star Wars history, if you include the games, comics, movies, everything. The last, I don't know, five minutes of this movie, best Star Wars moment ever in history. So with everything I've said, guys, I'm gonna have to give this movie girlfriend material. <laughs> It is a fun time at the movies, there's some depth, but there could be some things done a little bit better. So guys, what is your ranking of this movie in line with all the other movies? Do you think there should be a different viewing order now? Do you think somebody should see this movie before 4, 5, and 6, and then the other ones? Personally, I think this would be a great movie to play before somebody ever sees episodes 4, 5, or 6, because it doesn't give away any of the plot twists. You know, if you see the original prequels, episodes 1, 2, and 3... You'll know who Darth Vader is. This movie, it wouldn't give that sort of thing away. It'd be a great lead-in to episode four. I want to know what you guys think, though, so let me know and comment below. Also, remember, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, pretty much everything at Niddleman. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe because you get updated reviews every single week, if you can handle it. Go.